Welcome back everyone, Patrick here. Moving on to the next question dealing with quadratics. So we have to find a quadratic equation that's gonna have these roots over here. And notice that all of these roots, they have these radical expressions over here. There's no integers. With integers, it's a lot easier. So if we had, for example, roots x equals, let's say four and negative three, well, we know that from these roots, there would be factors x minus four, x plus three, and so the equation would be that is equal to zero. And then if you wanted to put this in standard form, you can uh, expand the brackets, right? The solutions to this quadratic equation are basically those two values. It's a lot easier when you're working with integers. Here, we're working with these radical terms. Now, remember, where are these radical terms coming from? Well, they're coming from the quadratic formula. Because remember, if we have a quadratic like that, quadratic equation, where this quadratic is in standard form, then we know that x is going to equal negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So what you can do here is basically take these solutions and you can sort of match it up. So we can go x equals 6 plus or minus root 6 all over 3. And so notice that this negative b value here has to equal this 6. So we could write down all of these equalities. So we have negative b is equal to 6. We also have 2a, the denominator, is equal to 3. And then we also have this entire expression b squared minus 4ac equaling just this 6, right? Whatever's under the square root here and whatever's under the square root there. So we're just matching up this format to this format. And then we could solve for the a, the b, and then the c value. And then we would have our quadratic equation in standard form. So with this negative b equaling 6, well, if we divide both sides by negative 1, notice b is going to be negative 6. Okay, so we have our b value. Here, notice that our a value is going to be 3 over 2. Okay, that's great. And now what we can do, we have to solve for this c value. And we could plug in this b value and this a value for this b and that a, and then we'll just have one thing to solve for, one uh, or the c value to solve for. So we'll have negative 6 squared minus 4 times the a value of 3 over 2 times c is equal to 6. So we'll have 36. Negative 4 times 3 over 2 would give us negative uh, 6 times c is just going to be c, and then we'll have 6 like that. So then we could bring this over, bring this over. So we'd have 36 minus 6, which would give us 30. And then we'll have 6c divided both sides by 6. C is just going to be 5 like that. And so notice we have our a, our, our a value, our b value, and then our c value. And so plugging those in here, notice we'd end up with 3 over 2 x squared minus 6x, right? The b value is negative 6, and then we have the plus 5 is equal to 0, like that. Okay, so the solutions to this quadratic equation is that right there. And if you wanted to quickly go and test it, you could take the a, the b, the c value, plug it into this quadratic equation, or a quadratic formula, rather, and you'd end up with this. Now, one thing I want to mention here is sometimes they're not going to allow you to have fractions here. So what you could do is you could just multiply everything by the lowest common denominator, both the left side and the right side, and it's still going to be the same equation. The solutions are going to be the same. So notice here we have a denominator of 2, so I'm going to multiply this by 2, this by 2, this by 2. So we'd have 3x squared minus 12x plus 10 is equal to 0. The solutions to this and that are both going to be this over here. It's just from this, the solutions would have to be simplified a little bit. So let me actually just show you. So if we take these 
parameters and a value 3, b value negative 12, c value 10, plug it into the quadratic formula, we'd have negative uh, negative 12 plus or minus negative 12 squared minus 4 times 3 times 10 all over 2 times 3, which would give us 12 plus or minus 144 minus 120 over 6, which is 12 plus or minus 24 over 6, and this is actually the same as that. Okay, I'm going to show you in a sec, but if you take 12 plus root 24 over 6, and then you take 6 plus root 6 over 3, you'll get the same decimal values. Or if you take 12 minus root 24, 6 minus root 6, and uh, this one you divide by 6, that one you divide by 3, both of them, you'll get the same decimals. Now the reason why this simplifies to that is because this root 24, we can actually simplify that to 12 plus or minus 4, or root 4 rather, root 6 over 6, and then we'll have 12 plus or minus 2 root 6 over 6, then we could factor out a 2. It's going to be over 6, and then 2 goes into 6 3 times, so we end up with 6 plus or minus root 6 over 3, which is what we originally started with. All right, so if you have to take a quadratic equation, sorry, and one thing I forgot to do here uh, is to multiply this by 2 as well. We've got to multiply the right side by 2, which does just end up giving us 0. But if you want to take a quadratic equation and you can't have any fractions, just multiply everything by the lowest common denominator and that remaining quadratic equation that you get, the solutions to that would still be the same thing that you have originally. It would simplify to the same thing. Okay, so whether you use this quadratic equation or this one, those are two examples of quadratic equations where the solutions are going to be that. And so that's what you do for these kinds of questions. Personally, that's what I do is I just try to uh, mix and match, right? I try to match the parts of the quadratic formula to whatever we're given. So notice negative B is going to be the same as negative 9. Notice the 2a is going to equal to the 8. Let's uh, simplify these first. So we'll have b is equal to positive 9. Here we'll have a is equal to 4. And then notice b squared minus 4ac, what's under the square root here, has to equal what's under the square root here. Then we could take these values, plug it in here. So we'll have 9 squared minus 4 times 4 times c, 129 and we'll have 81 minus 16c is equal to 129. And then I'll bring the 16c over, or actually I'll bring the 81 over. So I have negative 16c, uh, 129 minus 81 would give us what? It'll be 19 plus 29, which would give us 48. Divide both sides by negative 16c would equal negative three, like that. Uh, give me a sec here. Yes, that's right. And so from here, it's nice. There's no fractions. And so that would just end up being the uh, quadratic equation there. So the a value is 4. So we'll have 4x squared plus 9x minus 3 is equal to 0. If you take this quadratic equation, those parameters, throw it into the quadratic formula, it would simplify into that right there. Now, notice in part C, we actually don't have a denominator. And if you don't have a denominator, well, you could just put it over 1. So we'll have x equals 3 plus or minus root 6 over 1. So notice the negative b has to be the 3. And then notice 2a has to equal 1. So we'll have b is equal to negative 3. Divide both sides by negative 1. We'll have a is equal to a half over here. And then we got b squared minus 4ac has to equal 6, negative 3 squared minus 4 times a half times the c value has to equal 6. So we'll have 9 minus 2c is equal to 6. Um, so we'll have 2c is equal to 9 minus 6, which would give us 3. c is 3 over 2. So plugging those in, we're going to have some fractions here. So we will convert it. 1 half x squared, the b value was negative 3, 
then the c value is 3 over 2. And that's going to equal 0, like that. And then if you want to get rid of these fractions, you can multiply everything by the lowest common denominator, which is 2 in this case. So I'm going to multiply everything here by 2, multiply the right side by 2, so we end up with x squared minus 6x, 3 over 2 times 2 would give us 3. And then 2 times 0 is just 0. So the solutions to that quadratic equation would simplify to 3 plus or minus root 6. And then finally, part D. This one's actually in a bit of a different format because notice we have this 2 on the end. And what you want to do here is notice this was simplified. So this 2 is taken out of the root. So what you want to do is you want to put it back into the root so you have it in this format because there's no number in front here. So we want to try to make this. What we want to do is we want to try to take 2 root 11 and convert it so it's just one square root, right? So then we could see more clearly what's going on. The way we could do that, two, we could rewrite as root four. And then root four times root 11 would give us root 44, right? So root 44 and two root 11, both of those are the same thing. Um, and so now that's what I'm gonna write. We'll have negative 5 plus or minus root 44 instead of the 2 root 11 over 4. Okay, so negative b is equal to negative 5. That means b is equal to 5 if we divide both sides by negative 1. Uh, we got 2a is equal to 4, meaning a is equal to 2, like that. And then we got b squared minus 4ac equaling 44. Um, so we'll have 5 squared minus 4 times the a value of 2 times the c value, which we are solving for. This would be 25 minus 8c is equal to 4. Uh, bring, I'm going to bring this over, positive 8c, and then we'll have 25 minus 44, which would give us what? Um, 19, negative 19. So we're going to have... A fraction here for the c value, negative 19 over 8, if we divide both sides by 8 here. So the quadratic equation would be the a value 2x squared plus 5x minus 19 over 8 is equal to 0. And then let's multiply everything by 8. So we'd have 16x squared plus 40x minus 19 is equal to 0 like that, right? So whether you want to use this quadratic equation, if your teacher allows you to use fractions, that's fine. If they don't, you can just take whatever you got, multiply it by the lowest common denominator, then you'd have no more fractions left, right? So personally, I take the solutions, I write it right beside the quadratic formula, and then I match everything up and solve for the A, the B, and then the C value.